Good evening, everyone, and thank you for being here with us today. Today marks actually our fifth TikTok, and it's also the last TikTok before the summer break. Before we get started, thanks again for everyone who made this possible, especially Madeleine, uh, Sven and Christoph, uh, my colleagues who help build, operate, and grow the Institute, and of course, everyone from EBS, the European Business School. My name is Tobi, Tobias Gutmann, and uh, I'm an assistant professor here at EBS. And uh, at the TikTok, uh, this is one of our uh, like speaker series of the newly founded institute called TIC. It's the Institute for Technology, for Innovation, and for Customer Centricity. And actually, we want to find answers to some of the great questions uh, of today's decision makers, um, innovators, and change makers. And uh, we want to create this platform for discourse between the scholars like ourselves and practitioner like our keynote speaker. And this is why we established this format where we wanna invite inspiring personalities to promote technology oriented innovation management practices. And uh, this is why we today have invited Johannes Enders. Johannes is an expert in innovation management and he's an innovation consultant and coach at the Scheffler Group. And he will talk uh, today about uh, business planning and decision-making. For those of you who don't know Scheffler, Scheffler is a German manufacturer of rolling element bearings for the automotive, aerospace, and industrial uses. Actually, it's headquartered in Herzog Aurach in Germany. Herzog Aurach is very close to where I grew up, so this is uh, pretty nice to have uh, someone from a company which is kind of almost my hometown. So without further ado, uh, uh, Johannes, welcome to our TikTok. Um, for the next 15 minutes, you have the word and we all looking forward to your keynote. Okay, thank you very much for the introduction. Um, please give me a sign that you can see my screen. Yes, we can see it. So, so hello and uh, welcome all together. I would like to speak about the innovation at Scheffler and there are two topics for to this evening, business plan, how to create a business plan and the decision making process. And both are very close together. So what I would like to talk today is how can we make a decision the really first time in a life? So this means you uh, are confronted with a decision and you have never done a decision like that before. And a business plan should provide such a decision-making process because a business plan describe or create a picture of something really new. And both together are very, very interesting to have a look on it. So the first slides, I will give you only a few aspects on the business plan. It's not a detailed method explanation. It's more how a business plan is looks like. Um, I think one of the most important keys of a uh, business plan is uh, like here in this picture. It's an, an India picture, a symbol, um, the blind man and the elephant. So this means all of the guys in the picture are standing really close to a problem and they are really focusing on something. And they lose a bit the big picture, the overall picture. And both is important. You have to focus on an, in a business plan on several topics. But nevertheless, you have to find the best way to create this big picture. Don't lose anything. So please keep this picture in mind because um, if you would like to make a decision, it's also necessary to go sometimes very in detail and sometimes you need the big picture, the whole story. And if you will start an in, in innovation, a system process. So on this slide, you can see the way from a really fast beginning, like in search field or something where some questions that you could answer. And during this path, during this time, you can create a business plan. So right at the beginning, there's an idea. For an example, a new production technology. Is this new production technology 
ready for the company? Is it useful? You have to provide this decision. And it doesn't matter which kind of idea it is. In the really first step, you have to find a big picture where you don't lose any important topic. So you see here many arrows and there are some yeah, headlines or some, some characteristics of these arrows. It's not important which kind of topic they stand for or development logistics or so it's only an example. This means for, for your business plan, for your idea, you have to create your, I would say, arrow picture. Yeah, it's very important that is in 360 degree picture in holistic picture on this idea. Um, and it's in the first step, very important to have a quick analysis on the different topics. So you can get, get a feeling how good is your idea? Is there something, um, there are big hurdles for an example in logistics or in the IP surroundings or something like this. And what you also see here, I painted some headlines in black and some in blue. This, this means on the one hand, we have some technology aspects and also market aspects. This is one of the most important things is you, you have to look on both sides. So in this example, it could be a technical idea. For example, a new production technology. You, you find it in, on, on universities, for example. Yes, you have to make an analysis on the technical side, but also on the market side. And if you're doing this analysis and you are creating the business plan, you will get something like this. So all of the different headlines get more and more information. So you, you make some research and uh, make some analysis and found some information and you see the gap will be closer and closer and closer. On this example, we will have no hurdles in the market. Uh, it's, it's the normal way how we can sell the product to the customer. But we will have some gaps, uh, for example, on the technical side. We can make decisions in this situation and in that one. And I would like to explain a bit how the business plan will work at Scheffler or how we do this. It's the same picture. It's on the, on the right side here. We will start with a business idea. It's only a piece of paper. It's only a headline. It's only an idea. It's, it's very small and tiny. And then we take a folder. In, in Germany, we call it a uh, Leitzordner. This is only a folder where you can put some papers inside or in a digital way, a digital folder. And during this process here, it could be a long process, you fill up the folder with all the information that you got, all researches that you made, all information and so on. And during this process, we at Schaeffler, we call it business opportunity description. We are not sure at that moment, is this uh, a clear picture? There's changing a lot of things. And um, if you go in closer and closer to the end, yeah, you can say this is a business plan. So you label it up or uh, for me, I think it's better to, the, to say this is a book, you have written a book and this is a very special book because there are all the answers inside, but you don't know the question. So you have to prepare many, many answers in a business plan because you will go to a decision maker or decision making team, a steering committee, and they ask you some questions. For example, 10 questions. And if you have a good business plan, all the 10 questions are inside the, the book and you can answer all the questions. It's much better than you say, uh, I don't know. If you say, too often, I don't know, you will not get the, the right decision. And if you need some the more structure in this folder, uh, you can make it like this on the, on the bottom here. Um, you will find it in, in, yeah, in, 
Wikipedia or something like this. This is not really new. So this means for a business plan, it's important, please keep in mind the, the elephant picture or this uh, symbol. We have to start with only a piece of paper. And after this process, there's a book written with all the answers. So this is not easy to handle, but it's possible and we have to do this. If you have done a very good business plan, you have the possibility to present your idea or the, this business plan to a decision board, to a steering committee or to a, a person who, who could make the decisions. Um, or you would like to pre prepare your own startup. You go to the bank and there's a bank people and, there's, and they will decide if you get the money or not. So now we are on the point to get the right decision for you. And now it's a completely different way how we can make a decision. Um, if we are talking about innovation and a business plan, it means this is absolutely new. This is yeah, the base of innovation. And this means not a, a normal decision, it's, it's absolutely new. So how can we make decisions in a very unclear situation? There's no, no structure, no experience, no orientation. So if you go to a decision board and they only know the headline of the business plan, it's something like that for them. At the beginning, that's one of them said, okay, this is a black, a black picture. I don't know what happened there. Um, a bit dangerous, for example. Some other guys would say, okay, I don't know anything about this. It's absolutely new. It's, I have no idea. Or it's really dusty. So this means if you would like to present your business plan, this is the situation. The decision maker have not done a decision like that before. And you have, for example, only in half an hour to present your business plan. And this is a very, very complicated situation. What does they want? What are the a steering committee wants from you. There's a difference between trust and honesty. Or in German, there's uh, an Unterschied zwischen Wahrheit und Ehrlichkeit. What does you, uh, the session, decision making team wants? It's a bit more philosophic, um, this slide. So I will start with the truth. If you prepare a business plan, you will have the situation. You write down the whole truth in the business plan. For example, hundreds of slides, but you have only a short period of time for the presentation and the spoken truth is only a part of it. This is what you have to know. In your mind, you have the whole truth. What you are saying is only a part of it. And also for the decision-making team, what you get is only a part of the truth. Honesty is really important. This Ehrlichkeit in German. Um, it's very complicated to, to bring uh, honesty in a picture, but uh, I hope you, you know uh, The Simpsons and you, if you know The Simpsons, you know Ned Flanders. And I would say, if you know Ned Flanders, you know this is the most honest person in the universe. No, no real person is more honest than that one. Um, but what, is, what does a decision-making committee want from your side? The truth or the honesty? Um, uh, as I, in, in, in my, in my part time at Scheffler, I have the possibility to present business plans to steering committees. And I take this um, slide in this committee and right at the beginning and I said, what do you want from me? Would you like to hear the truth or honesty? I have two presentations. 
it's your decision. But be careful. The result is different. What do you want? And there was a really nice discussion in this decision-making committee. What they want is not the truth, not honesty, it's trust in people. And I said, okay, my recommendation is don't step into this business. But the truth is different. Looking to the business plan, there are some uh, categories like um, yeah, market analysis, benchmarking, and so on. The truth is, yes, I make them analysis in this way. This is the truth. My recommendation is here. Don't step into this business. It's not good for us. So this is one very interesting part of, of the decision process. If you prepare a decision or a business plan for a decision, have a look to this committee, a deep look to them. What is the background? What is the feeling? What is the time where they have to make this decision? Is this time for new innovations or not? This is one aspect, the truth and honesty. One other aspect, is if you are preparing a business plan, you make some assumptions, some theories, some statements. For example, you have to think about the market, the volume, the sales volume, and the turnover, and so on. And you make some assumptions. You make some theories and said, okay, this is the price, um, this is the volume, and then we will have such kind of turnover and so on and so on. But really often we know that there are false assumptions or false theories. I will give you an example of such an assumption. Yeah, I believe that parasites are the cause of counter or in German, Parasiten sind der Grund für Krebs. This is only a theory or assumption from my side. What do you think about that? Do you believe me? Yes, no, or did you check the theory? Probably not. So if you are talking about the, the market or the technology or the production technology and so on and so on, we make some assumptions in the business plan. And sometimes we are wrong, sometimes we are right. And sometimes the decision makers said we are wrong. And I will come back to this uh, assumption here. This is not from, from me. Um, this is made by Johannes Fiebinger and he got the Nobel Prize for Medicine in 1926 for this yeah, false assumption. This is a, a traumatic example of a false theory. But if we are thinking about a business plan, we would like to have the decision for to get the money, to step into a new business or to step into a new technology. And it was, it was very, very dangerous for a company or for yourself if you're going into a startup, um, if there's a false assumption behind that. Some other examples for that. It's quite simple things, the weather gods. Some, some people thinking about you have to dance and the rain is coming. Uh, we all know this will not work. But also look to other uh, examples here. Um, in Germany, we have uh, in some cities uh, the Mietpreisbremse. Yeah? How does it work? What is the reason behind? What are the facts behind this theory? Is it workable? Then it's good. If not, it's very dangerous if this is a false assumption or linked to uh, atomic energy. In the past, the government supported very well. Now we step out of this technology and it's only a short period of time. And there are only 50 or 60 years we're using this technology. It's very, very um, expensive. Now it's very dangerous, but the topic why we step out it's, it's not the, the, the waste problem. Yeah? The, the reason is there was an earthquake near Japan. This was the reason why we stepped out so traumatically right at the moment. 
currently on the technical side, we, we are talking about e-mobility or green hydrogen. Why we are doing this? What is the reason behind this assumption? Is it ecological things? Okay. What if this is wrong? The whole branch are on the wrong track. So this is very dangerous. So you see, there's not easy to, to handle this kind of, of assumptions. And, um, but why does it comes to such false theories or assumptions? Here you have only a, a, a few points of that. Time delay, perfect. Look at immobility. We are doing something right at the moment and we have no idea what happened in the future. Or we make some generalization. Yeah, we're talking about uh, immobility for small cars and then generalization means all mobility must be uh, uh, in an immobility. Or linear correlations. We said, okay, for, for small cars, then we make linear to all different segments. And if you're thinking about the faults of assumptions or theories, this is the reason behind that. So this means if you're preparing a business plan, you have to make some assumptions. This is absolutely necessary. It, it, it's, it's one of your job. But if you do this, going deeper and deeper to, to statistics, to, to, um, yeah, to universities and found out the basement of the theory. So this is very, uh, very good theory and you are not on the wrong track. So thank you very much for, for this, um, for hearing me and um, just a few words to my person. Um, here you can see it on a slide, um, my, my, my lifetime in Echefla. Um, during 24 to 28, I started Echefla in the testing department. After that, uh, since 2008, I'm on the innovation management department. The, the name is now new business creation. So you see uh, many, many more than 10 years, I'm located in, in the innovation management surrounding. And therefore I'm also involved as a board member of one of the biggest um, conference for innovation management. And uh, since nearly 10 years, I'm uh, the chairman of a group of innovation managers of different companies and we 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 sitting together twice a year and look to the future, look to the methods, and talking about the new things uh, about uh, innovation management. And yeah, it's also possible to for me to be a lecturer of different universities and high schools at, uh, in, in Germany. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Johannes. Uh, very interesting. And uh, like the whole business planning aspect, this is something I also teach. So this is, um, I'm very curious about your answers. You know, uh, I'd love to know. And uh, for everyone who's listening in, uh, uh, just that you know, the next 10 minutes, I will ask some questions. So all be prepared. After 10 minutes, uh, you can also kind of join in into the Q&A. But my first question to you, Johannes, is, you know, business planning is still a very static assessment. You know, um, uh, you also mentioned you you collect all the uh, all the files, all the information about the different uh, topics. Uh, yep. Can you elaborate a little? How does it fit into the VUCA world? You know, uh, for example, yeah, um, the car industry is changing. You know, uh, we all know from mechanical engineering to software engineering. Volkswagen just established this uh, Cariat uh, where they they're trying to set up this new strategy of becoming a software company, and this of course impacts you. Because uh, you as a uh, supplier, to one supplier, this is uh, directly uh, kind of have an impact on you. you know, how does this static assessment of business planning, what might uh, used to work 10, 15 years ago, how does it work now in the VUCA world where you actually don't know where the future is going? Yeah, it's not so much a, a big change. Um, the nice thing in innovation is it's every time completely new. Um, I will make an example. If you if you're producing only a component of uh, from metal side, for example, and if you change into components in plastic, um, it is a traumatic change for a company. 
because the, the, the whole equipment, the whole facilities, the whole network uh, is, is changing dramatically. Um, if you're producing metal parts and plastic parts um, and you will create systems, for example, uh, uh, electric motors, uh, you can say, oh, this is also tr changing dramatically. But at the end, everything in, in the innovation area is very new. So Cheflam, uh, as an example, we, we, we started with rolling elements or we, we produce uh, carpets at the, right at the beginning and we change all the time a bit our business models, our product portfolio, and we enrich our product portfolios um, all the time. And in the last years, we step from the components into systems. And now we step from the systems into yeah, systems with yeah, some software and so on. So if you work in a company that is, um, had learned to go the path that is new, it's quite, um, it's more simple um, to reach the next goal. So um, the most important thing is that you are um, flexible enough to hear what the customer needs, needs. But I think in this way, it's not the customer driven innovation. It's more an regularity or um, the, an, an, a market driven innovation. Uh, the customer only wants to have a cheap car. Um, and if you're looking to the different um, car manufacturers, everything will be there. And, and, and important for us is the, the change. And uh, for you, if you're a student here and you are looking to the next um, company where we would like to work, um, look very careful how good this company can um, provide innovations and uh, how they support innovations. And is it possible for this company to overthink all the time the product portfolio and, and spend enough money into innovation and business development and so on? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I really liked your um, illustration on, on truth versus honesty. Um, can you talk about transparency? You know, uh, yeah, the interesting yeah. aspect uh, yeah, what you mentioned, yeah, you were standing in front of the decision making board and asking, do you want the truth or do you want uh, honesty? But in general, at the end, uh, you communicate your business plan inside of the organization. Um, yeah, and yeah. Uh, like, how, how, and also maybe externally, you know, to investors or whatever, huh? and to the external, uh, to the outlet. How transparent are you? And uh, how does it, uh, how does this transparency change depending if you choose truth or honesty? Yeah, transparency is very interesting. On the one hand, everyone likes transparency because you can make decisions clearer and so on. On the other hand, transparency is not really good because you cannot, um, uh, using submarines projects, for an example. Uh, but if you, are, if you are talking about innovation, you need, yeah, you need both. And transparency, yeah, it's hurt a bit. It's, it's, it's dangerous for some people. And um, my rule at Scheffler is to create this transparency. And only with the transparency, we, we can create this kind of picture of an, of an, of a future. And um, for me, the, the, the innovation project is more important than the, the, the boss, for example. Um, for me, it's very important that I, we have a very clear picture and very open-minded picture on, for example, new technologies. And if we will found out that there are some aspects that are not really good for us, um, I like it to, to bring this this points on the table, yeah, and uh, I like to discuss exactly these critical points, yeah, because um, in an innovation process, quite at the beginning, um, it's cost not a lot, a lot of money to prepare something like a business plan or to create this picture, and if we point out some critical points, it's not a problem, 
very important. If you stay in front of the steering committee and you said, this is a very nice picture that I've shown you, but there is one critical aspect. For example, the um, IP rights is very critical. Uh, there are some companies with more IP rights than, than we. Um, this is not a problem. This is a transparency and you, you be open-minded and be open to the steering committee and then you will get the trust in the people. Yeah, if you, if you um, don't say it, it's very dangerous. So it's more important to say the obvious things that, um, or the obvious hurdles of the business plan or of the technology, um, it's better than if you, if you miss these topics. So uh, transparency is one side. It's, it's absolutely necessary. And some people like the transparency, but they also like untransparency. 